Good morning, crappy friends. This morning, I am bringing you a little um, segment of our Creating Inspiration with Lace. And today, I'm going to be doing a little boho. Um, I have taken a pair of one of my favorite pair of jeans. I know you're probably going, oh, there's no way I would do that. But this is so simple. What I have done is taken, this is a regular straight lace pair of jeans. And what I did was to take a piece of this luscious lace that May has in Creating with Details and sewed it into the side of the pant leg. Now, this process takes just a few minutes to do, um, and I will show you now how I did that. Now, in order to keep your sides, here I've, I've um, glued on a little, one of the little butter uh, butterfly, not butter, butterfly appliques that um, Creating with Details also carries. And as you can see, I put one here as well. Now I have some more of these um, that I will be gluing up the seam just to give it that little shabby boho look. Now how you embellish this once you get your lace panel in is limitless. There are so many ways that you could do this. You could use sari ribbon, uh, brooches, uh, May has a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous rhinestone cross that uh, would look absolutely lovely right here. So without further ado, what you need to do is to get your lace and this is how it comes packaged and this is a lot of lace. Trust me, you'll see when I open this that it comes in a one yard length and one yard is more than enough for how I did these these uh, this panel of jeans. So what I did was to take my jeans oops, excuse me, my neck can't decide to go lanky on me there. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. I'm so sorry. Okay. Now what I did to measure the amount of lace that I wanted is I just laid the lace on the pant leg like this and simply cut right at the edge of the pant leg. like that. Now the next step is to, you want to gather the top of your lace and it does have this little um, mesh at the top of it. I simply folded that over and used this fantastic needle that Creating with Details also carries. Now, this is perfect for people who have um, problems with arthritis or some other issues with their hands. Um, one of the things that I like about it is the eye is quite large. So it makes it easy to thread, which is something that I struggle with a great deal. Simply put that thread in there and just overhand knot the two ends together and do a running stitch. Now you do a lock stitch in the beginning just to secure your threads and you don't have to worry about this being extremely secure because we're going to use the sewing machine to stitch this panel into the pant leg. Now if you don't have a sewing machine you could 
repeat this same process and use something like Fabri-Tac to attach this to the opening that you're going to create here. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Um, you just have to take your time with it and make sure that it's secure um, and allow time in between for it to dry. It dries very quickly and it's very, very, very secure. I can tell you that because I used this on something and later changed my mind about what I wanted to do. I tried to remove it. Uh, not happening. So that is another option to using your sewing machine. Um, it is very, like I said, very secure. Um, it doesn't really dry too hard so that is definitely a viable option. Now I'm just going back and forth. Make sure that you keep your ruffles out of the way and just going back and forth with the needle. And that's the other thing I love about this needle is for short projects like this where you don't have to do a gathering stitch that's too long. You can actually gather the whole thing in one swipe with this needle and don't have to, you know, pull the needle through and sew some more and then gather it all up. It's just that simple. You just pull it through and you want to pull it tight so that it gathers like this. This is going to go in the V where you cut the jeans. You're going to have a V opening and this is where this piece is going to go. So I'll just lock this in place again you don't have to be extremely worried about how secure this is because once this goes into the sewing machine you're sewing right over top of this so this is just to make it easier for placement in the jeans and that is all there is to preparing your lace panel to insert it into the jeans now when I did this initially on the other pair of jeans I simply put the lace at the end of the pant leg right here so that I knew how far up to make my cut on the jeans. Now to do that, to make the cut in the jeans, I'm going to measure because I've already got one and I want them to match. Um, I'm going to take my tape measure and measure this opening here so that it's the exact same as the other side. <coughs> so we have roughly <coughs> ten and a half inches. <coughs> so the next step is to, and when you're doing this, make sure that you've got the outside seam of your jeans. Um, otherwise, it's going to look funny because you're going to have your, your ruffles on the inside of your legs. And that, I don't know, it could be a new fashion statement. I'm not sure. But at any rate, you simply take your scissors and cut right on the seam on the outside of the leg. And you want to measure this up or eyeball it with your lace to, I said, ten and a half. So I'm just going to measure roughly ten and a half on here. So right about there. And you just simply cut to you reach that point. Go. And now your pant leg is open like this. You can cut these little pieces of the extra seam here. You can cut that off and just get rid of it. Now, to do this, you're going to want to turn your pant leg inside out. And you can see you could even add more of this. You could you could double this if you wanted to and make it even a wider belt. 
I mean, the choices are limitless. You not only could use the lace, you could use fabric, you could use doilies, you could use any kind of fabric that you wanted to accomplish taking a pair of straight leg jeans and turning them into a pair of bell bottoms. I wanted these to be kind of shabby boho, so I chose to do this yummy, yummy lace. Now, here's where you want to take your lace panel, and there is a right and wrong side because you can see the, the little ruffles here, and you want to lay that face down, the right side down, and start attaching the lace just using you now I don't like to baste so I use safety pens or straight pens but if you're uncomfortable about using straight pins only you could just use your needle and thread and just baste this in using a running stitch before you take it to the sewing machine now I just pin this all along the edge on both sides of the pant leg. Making sure that your mesh lines up with the bottom hem of your jeans. Now when you sew this, it's going to be one continuous stitch all the way around. And it literally takes only a couple of minutes. Once This is the tedious part, getting, getting this uh, pinned out, laid out, stitched out, um, you know, basted, however you're going to do this. Or, or even if you're going to do this with glue, instead of using the straight pins, um, and you could use the, the straight pins to do this, to hold it in place, and just simply take your uh, Fabri-Tac or whatever glue um, you want to use. They also have a product which is like a hem tape. It's like a seam binding. They call it stitch witchery, something like that. You could also, if you don't have a sewing machine, um, you could get some of this and use your iron and simply put that in the seam right here and put these together. This is a permanent seam. It's washable, um, but a word of caution, if you're going to use this, when you use this, you're going to need a damp pressing cloth on top of the lace because this will scorch. It will burn holes in it. So if you're going to use something like that, just be cautious and take your time. Um, so I'm going to continue to pin this. Now, I've pinned it only so far up because I want to make sure that I have this top part where it needs to be. So I basically find what I think is pretty much the center and straighten out the little gathers and then pin the center of that to the V in the opening. So you have a V opening here where you cut it. So I simply put a straight pin right there. Make sure that your jean is opened up and you're not getting your seams or other parts of the jean caught in it. And then I do the same thing here with the rest of it. Just kind of gather it there. And this is going to give it a little bit of flair when you wear the jeans because of that um, gathering at the top. And then make sure that your little ruffles are not caught up anywhere and just continue to pin it. As I said, this is the most time consuming part of doing this, but it, as you can see, it's really not taking all that much time. And the extra time is worth all the effort because when you're done, you know it's done right and you don't have to worry about it coming apart or being crooked or anything like that. So, and we have a couple more here and then we're going to take it to the machine and stitch it together. And as I'm working with this, I'm just tucking those ruffles inside a little bit. And 
and there you have it, all pinned together. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine, and I'm using, um, this is a very old sewing machine. I've had this for probably 25 years, but I'm just using, it's a Husqvarna Rose, um, and having it, had it for 25 years and only had it service once, it's a good sewing machine. So, let me bring this in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to be using a straight stitch um, to sew this on here. And I've extended the stitch length to about 3.5 um, because I found that anything smaller than that just kind of, it has a tendency to possibly pucker. So I put my presser foot right here on the edge of the jeans and that gives me about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now the first thing, oh, I'm so sorry. My camera is, is possessed, I think. Okay. Uh, the first part of this, when in stitching this, is a little bit tricky because the seam is a little bit thicker. But what I do is just put my needle down in the down position and just start stitching. And you kind of you can kind of lift up your presser foot a little bit and just get over that hump. Once you get over that hump, it's clean sailing. So. Now don't do what I'm doing. I can hear my mother yelling at me right now. Don't sew over those pins because you'll break your needle. You will. But I am extremely impatient and want to get the finished product done. But I do, when I come to a pin, um, just slow down a little bit. And this you could eliminate if you basted this. Um, prior to stitching it on the machine. And you sew right up to where you have this um, little V opening here. And this is where it gets just a little bit trickier because what you want to do is kind of twist the pant leg so that you have your V opening um, right here. You want to have that so that once you get up to this point, um, you can stitch, oh dear. Now at this point, I put my needle down again, make sure that's in there, put the needle down and continue. I just poked myself and got a little um, blood on here, but I'll get that out with some soda water and I'm done. You want to stitch right to that V opening and it, it's okay you can feel where the V is with your finger um, you want to stitch right to there put your needle down again and just pivot so that your seam is going per, uh, straight again and just continue to stitch all the way down to the other end of the pant leg and as I said, take your time when you're doing this. Um, even if you take your time, it's not going to take very long to get this finished. And again, when you get to this little hump, you just kind of have to work with your sewing machine. You go very slowly. 
And then when I get to the end, I just do a lock stitch by reversing it on the sewing machine. And that is all there is to it. Uh, to sewing it in, you just simply take out your let me move the sewing machine back out of the way. Take out your pins. Make sure you take out all your pins because when you go to put these on, if there's one hidden inside that little ruffle right there, it's gonna hurt. You can probably tell um, that's from personal experience and having done that. Now I just simply cut off my threads and turn the pant leg right side out again. And there you have it. Voila! You ha now have a shabby boho bell bottom pants. Now, to do these little butterfly appliques, and I did want to show you, um, I use these appliques on the shirt that I'm wearing. Um, I simply cut a slit in my shirt and open it up. And the nice thing about t-shirt fabric is that when you cut this opening, it automatically rolls back so you have an instant hem. And then I just simply used, again, the Fabri-Tac and glued this on here. I did pin it as I glued it and just took you know my time and glued it on there. Another simple easy thing to do. So in order to apply these little butterflies and this was again you these come in just like you see it here comes in a one yard length. So after I did this on both sleeves I had some of these little butterflies left that I just cut apart. You simply flatten out your pant leg again. Take some of this fabric tack and just apply the fabric tack right to the butterfly. You don't have to do the whole thing just kind of along the edges um, where you want it to stick and I did cut out some of the mesh some of it I left because this is you know this is shabby it's boho it's supposed to be a little unfinished and I laid the center of the butterfly right on the seam of the pant leg and yeah just glue and that this glue dries clear so you're not going to see any of this if you get a little on the pant leg you can take a damp cloth and just wipe it up and that's all there is to it ladies so I um, will be sharing pictures later on I have to um, figure out how to get my pictures to work because my camera is not loading onto my new computer um, I just got a new computer because I have been trying to create videos for the last two weeks and my webcam and my old computer were fighting and they didn't like each other so I had to go get a new computer and now the software for my new com my new or my old camera won't work on my new computer so ladies I hope that you've enjoyed this I hope that you have been inspired I will provide a link um, in the bottom in the description box to all the products that I have used if you like this video please give me a thumbs up um, share it and subscribe to my channel until next time ladies be kind to each other be supportive and have a very best blessed day peace